Hi, and welcome to another TechZonk video. In today's video, we're going to turn this Raspberry Pi 2 into a working multi-game console emulator capable of playing Atari, NES, Super NES, Sega Genesis, and many other classic video game consoles. Let's go ahead and get started. The hardware items you'll need are the Raspberry Pi 2, a USB keyboard, a micro SD card, a micro USB power adapter to power up the Pi, and a suitable USB controller. To get started, you'll need to download the latest RetroPie distribution. This is a specifically configured operating system that is configured to boot up directly into Emulation Station, the software that drives the retro gaming extravaganza that you're going to experience right here. Use your favorite card reader and software to transfer the RetroPie image to the micro SD card. Now in my case, I'm using the standard SD card reader, and I've got the micro SD card plugged into an adapter for kind of a perfect fit. And it takes me a few short minutes to write everything to the SD card, but it eventually completes and allows me to move on. Now, if you get an error that suggests that the process can't be completed in full, which is what I got at first, go ahead and check the SD card and see if there's a toggle switch on the side that's set to read-only mode. And if it is, go ahead and flip that switch and try it again. This time, it should work for you. Once the image is transferred to the SD card, move the card to the Raspberry Pi. Plug in your keyboard and your controller, and this part is very important. You want to go ahead and plug the Pi into your network somehow. Now, I chose to plug directly into my router, so I've got a Cat6 cable, but if you prefer to use a, like a wireless adapter, for example, that is certainly going to work, but it's going to maybe require a little bit of manual configuration up front, but that's an option. You just need to make sure that you're online. Now, being online is absolutely critical to getting this set up. You'll want to plug your Raspberry Pi into a monitor with your HDMI output and then plug in your power. Okay, here we go. When the Raspberry Pi boots up for the first time, you're going to have a bit of a loading sequence that you sit through. Don't worry, it's all completely normal. Just let it do its thing. You'll eventually see that the RetroPie splash screen comes up, and then the emulation station screen will come up, and that's how you know you're on the right track. The first thing you'll see is the RetroPie recognizes your USB controller, and it wants you to configure it. Just go ahead and follow the on-screen on -screen instructions, rather. It's really simple. To skip the configuration of any buttons that you don't have on your controller, just press any button and hold it for about two seconds and that signals to the configuration process to go ahead and move on and ignore that particular button. When that's done, you're going to get a very pretty menu here that you can scroll through using your USB controller. The first thing you'll want to do is scroll over to the RetroPie menu option and select it. From this screen, select the Raspberry Pi configuration tool. Select the Expand File System option. It's going to let you know that all is well, and you can move on from there. You'll go to the Advanced Options menu. From there, select Memory Split. In the resulting window, if you're using Raspberry Pi 2 like I am, enter 512. If you're using Raspberry Pi Model B, then you'll enter 256. Say OK, save that setting. Now, if you're on the Raspberry Pi 2 like I am, scroll to the Overclock option. It'll warn you that what you're about to do can be dangerous, but it's okay in this particular case. After the warning, select the Pi 2 option to use overclock settings that are suitable for the Raspberry Pi 2 hardware and select OK. When that's done, move on down and select Finish. When the Raspberry Pi prompts you to reboot, go ahead and agree, let that happen. You'll be back up and running really quick. When the reboot sequence is done, you'll be able to get right back into the RetroPie menu. Now is a good time to make note of your IP address. You can select the Show IP Address menu option from the menu to see what it is. It's kind of a handy thing to have because this is what's going to allow you to FTP your game ROMs to the Raspberry Pi device that you can ultimately play. Next, we'll need to go to the RetroPie setup. You have to be connected to an internet capable network for this part. That's what I was mentioning earlier. So you'll select the RetroPie setup option from the menu. Now from this window, select that first option, Binary Based Installation, and select OK. Now this is where the magic happens. Now be aware, this process takes a considerable amount of time. Uh, what you're seeing right here is easily, it's one of the most impressive and thoroughly uh, automated scripts around. It's really unbelievable. The Raspberry Pi is reaching out to a variety of sources online. It's downloading the software that's necessary to run all of the many emulators that this tiny little gaming machine is going to support. Now, in some cases, it's downloading you know simple binary installs, but in other cases, it's downloading source, it's compiling it, it's configuring it, it's deploying it all automatically. It's all doing it for you. If you were to try to do this manually, the amount of hours it would take to get this done, is it's actually pretty significant. So, look, just grab a nice cool beverage, sit down, down, put your feet up and enjoy the wonder of software automation. This process just keeps going and going 
and going, depending on your network, of course, your internet speed rather, this could take anywhere from say one hour to even two hours. But don't worry, it's working the entire time. It's doing really, really cool stuff. Just let it go ahead and all happen. Okay, now when all the big stuff is done, you're gonna see these screens. Pay attention to them. They're letting you know what additional work you actually need to do. Some of the emulators require you to download additional ROMs and put them in place uh, where they're directing you to in these particular stre screens. Now, if the game machines don't matter to you that they're talking about here, then you're fine to move on. You don't have to take any action. But for me, I was hot to see the Atari 800 home computer work, so I had additional work to do. These screens told me so. So when you get through all of it, you get through all these screens and you do what you have to do, go ahead and have the system perform a reboot. Okay, now it's possible after the reboot at this point that it may ask you to configure your USB controller again. It did for me. Go ahead and go through it. It's likely going to be the last time that you have to do that. Now you're ready at this point to upload ROMs to the device. I chose to do so using SFTP on the command line, but you can use any process that you're comfortable with. You've got the IP address now, so you know how to access your, your Raspberry Pi internally. So ROMs need to exist in the slash home slash pi slash retro pi slash roms directory in the machine specific subdirectory. So what I mean by that, for example, is if you're going to upload NES games, then you need to make sure that you upload those roms into the NES subdirectory in home pi retro pi roms. Once your ROMs are in place, you're good to go. You now have a multi-console emulator with a very convenient HDMI connection that lets you play the classic games that you loved on a current television monitor. It's awesome. You can download games from a variety of different you know, websites that specialize in emulator ROMs and you're good to go. So listen, thanks so much for watching this video. If this video helped you do something similar or if it gave you the idea to do something similar, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me. And be sure to subscribe to get, you know, alerts on future videos that are like this or on, on similar topics. Anyway, I'll see you all in the next video.